Hi, you can see I'm in a brand new Tesla. Well, it's not exactly brand new, about 3,860 miles. But it's not the Model S, it's not Domino. This is Caravan, my new Model X. You can see that because it has the Falcon Wing doors. Now why Tesla? Why now? Why the Model X? Why not another Model S? I'm glad you asked. why Tesla? Why now? Well, my God, I've been dreaming of self-driving car for 25 years, wanting some sort of cooperative or self-driving car. And now we're basically there. I had a near close call going to work one day where the traffic was stopped in one lane and I was trying to get out of that lane and I'm looking forward and backward and forward and backward. By the time I looked ahead, that lane had almost completely stopped and it wasn't that close, but it's too close for comfort. And I started to realize that you know, a car that can look ahead, behind, sideways, and have a supercomputer calculating it all and keeping you safe, that's what I wanted and that's what I needed. So I started thinking about the Model 3. Well, I realized it's going to be too long of a wait, and looking at the test of the website, it said, well, you know, you can get a Model S or Model X with full self-driving capabilities. Well, full self-driving is yet to be seen, but certainly autopilot is awesome, or the self lane keep and the adaptive cruise control technically. I also was following Tesla as a stock for years and years and was trying to figure out like everybody else whether it was real or whether it was hype or what and whether I should invest in it and tried a number of times to get into it. But those are all other videos and I would like to tell you about the insurance and how that all got started but this is more of an introductory video of why Tesla and what I think of it now that I have one and I've had a Model S and a Model X. First of all, forget all the tech, forget the autopilot. What these cars are is smooth, precise control. The acceleration is terrific, but it's not just that. You can use the first 10-20% only and you're never going to be slower than anybody else in traffic. You only used to, if you go more than half, then it really lets you know that you the car wants to accelerate. Otherwise, this car is just, and then you let off the accelerator and you get this regenerative braking effect. So it's backwards, forward, smooth, precise control. Now what's precision? That means reproducible. Now the accuracy comes from you or the autopilot, and again, that's still be wor being worked out. But left to right, the steering, it's awesome forward and backward it's awesome it's smooth precise control so again pretty much the number one thing I got it for was safety but when you get this vehicle you realize it is the best vehicle you've ever driven probably the best vehicle ever produced now I've never driven Ferraris or Lamborghinis or anything like that the most I've ever done is some mid-level Porsche and Audis and they don't compare they don't even come close to this 
And the whole thing about it is an electric vehicle is just better from the ground up. It's just, when you mash on the accelerator and it takes off, it takes off. But you can also just drive it as smooth as possible. You can keep your watt hours low. So it's a lot of fun. It's basically every kind of vehicle you could ever want. And you need that precision if you're going to have some sort of autopilot or self-driving. Now again, the accuracy comes from sensors, cameras, radar, possibly LiDAR, possibly mapping and possibly the driver themselves. So when I first got this car, and I recommend this to other people, go ahead and just turn off the radio, turn off as much of the dashboard sensors as you can. You can turn off empty to the left and right of your dashboard screen. You can leave up just your rear camera if you want. And just listen to the quietness and just feel the smoothness and the control and the precision. As I keep saying, smooth, precise control. But then once you've done that for about a week, then you can really start sitting down and playing with the tech. There's all kinds of great things. The navigation is linked to your supercharger network, so you always know where your next charge is. Right now there's a hurricane west of us here in Texas. Well, it's in Texas, west of us. And so I charged up the car more than normal just so I would have an evacuation vehicle. And also, if the power goes out, we can come and sit in here and have AC and climate control and biodefense. I got the full premium package including the stereo because why not? People have bad mouthed the browser, but I think it's great. Now you're not going to be watching Netflix, which is kind of the point, but you can do some great things like there's radar you can look at. So you can see the weather. There's something called Tesla Winds, which you sign up for two other sites and then you get basically your position. It's telling you where you're headed, your speed, and it calculates the wind and also calculates the elevation. So it shows you your tailwind whether you have a tailwind or headwind or a crosswind. It's very neat and you don't see that on a Ford or anything else. The Tesla app on your phone is fantastic. We use this because my girlfriend and I, whoever has the car, can see where the other one's at. And it's not a way of stalking or spying, it's just a way of knowing that the other one is alright and where they're at. And you can plan, you know, are they going to be home for the kids or the animals, and you can know exactly where the other one's at. Basically, I think every vehicle should have it, but apparently nobody else has really caught on that way. Of course, everybody talks about this. The EV vehicle has probably 20 moving parts versus 2,000 moving parts for a gas vehicle. <laughs> That's just much more efficient, much more less likely to break. There's all these environmental controversies that real, well, the, the battery costs energy to mine, and that's true, but you only mine it once. One of the reasons I bought this vehicle is because I'm here in southern Louisiana, pretty much smack dab in oil and gas country. People drive their huge trucks. I wanted a vehicle that could compete with all that, could be faster than them, funner than them, and basically being more environmentally conscious, getting much better efficiency. But really the car is about fun. 
it's about sharing. People who see this car and I share it at work and I show different people in law enforcement and different attorneys and they just love it and they just think it's the greatest vehicle they've ever seen and a lot of them have seen very fancy vehicles and when they get a feel of it and they get a feel of the acceleration and the control and the tech and the comfort they just leave stunned. So one of my plans is I want to share this vehicle and it sounds crazy sharing such a fancy vehicle but I like to give test rides, I like to show it off and that's not really in my comfort zone but it's kind of a vehicle that needs to be shared and shown off. also want to share it possibly on Uber and possibly on Turo, rent it out as a way for people to test drive and not have to drive to Houston. YouTube of course, try to share it there, let people know what a great vehicle and company it is. And just driving around, <laughs> letting people know that it's available. So what it really comes down to is it's fun. It's really put the fun back into driving. It's put the fun back in road trips. I already drove from Louisiana to New Mexico. Had no problem. Drove across the panhandle of Texas in August and everything worked perfectly. So I couldn't be happier in just the short time having it. and you don't have the sort of guilt of burning gas all the time and of course you are using some energy but electricity is only getting cleaner cheaper and less bloody whereas gas is getting more expensive dirtier and bloodier and I think everybody knows what I mean by that And it just brings fun back to joyrides. You can just, <laughs> it's just a fun vehicle. I like to accelerate all the stop on my own, beat everybody off the line, and then switch into autopilot after I get to the speed limit and just sit back and keep my hands on the wheel and just relax while they're passing me by doing over the speed limit. And the autopilot's fantastic if you don't know about it. You know, it's not perfect, but we shouldn't let perfect be the enemy of very good, and it's only getting better. So that's the conclusion. There'll be probably a lot more videos on all kinds of different subjects, mostly fun. Everybody else has different takes on Tesla. There's lots of great information about that. This isn't meant to be the final word or technical analysis. It's just my experiences and my Teslas. And that's it. Thank you. You, you YouTubers, listen to me. This is Sasha the Coyote. Do not listen to that idiot two-legged human. He's an idiot. He's not an expert in anything. And besides, Sasha the Coyote is the expert in all things coyote. If you have a coyote question, put it in the comments below. Do not subscribe to this idiot's channel and do not like it. There, I've said it.